You've watched a couple episodes of Phineas and Ferb, and now you think Candace never actually managed to bust her brothers, right? Right? <laughs> Wrong! She tried time and time again, and she eventually ended up busting someone. Herself, mostly, but she did bust her brothers as well on a few occasions. More often than you think, actually. It's the boys. They're busted. Unfortunately, since the universe cannot allow Candace to actually bust her brothers and get her obsession over with, 99% of the time, as soon as the boys get busted, something ends up undoing everything or changing the day's events. But this doesn't change the fact that someone technically got busted, right? Right? Wrong. But anyway, we'll be taking a look at the 5 times Candace busted Phineas and Ferb, with an emphasis on what led up to her busting them and also what changed the timeline afterwards. I actually busted Phineas and Ferb! This is the happiest moment of my life! Number 5. Phineas and Ferb's Quantum Boogaloo But I've decided the problem is I always jump the gun, so I'm gonna wait till just the right moment to- Hello? Hello? They're on the move! I'll bust it now! I'll bust it now! Phineas and Ferb time travel 20 years into the future looking for a tool that fuses metal with wood. During their search, they meet adult Candace, who, after realizing what was going on, runs to get her mom to show her the boy's time machine. Unsurprisingly, future Linda misses it as he travels back to the present. You never saw them and you still never see them! It's not fair! It's not fair! By a stroke of luck though, a new time machine arrives at the museum after a couple minutes, so future Candace decides to travel back to the first day of summer when the boys build the roller coaster, knowing how to bust them once and for all. Future Candace runs into the supermarket, drags her mom outside, and opens her eyes, finally showing her the boys' roller coaster. Phineas and Ferb made that? Astonished by the giant contraption right in front of her, Linda panics and calls the police, the fire department, the army, the air force, and the marines, begging them to save her sons. Being an overprotective mom, Linda grounds her sons for good, consequently altering the timeline by pushing hundreds of concerned parents to stop all creativity in young people. This havoc allowed the rise of Emperor Doofenshmirtz, leading to a dystopian future where Doof gets to rule the tri-state area. Or perhaps the whole world, uh, I'd like to think he managed to rule the world, he deserves that. Emperor Doofenshmirtz, ah, get back to work! If you're curious to know how it all ends, future Candace couldn't let Doof have his moment in the spotlight, so she travels back to the first day of summer once more, stopping herself from busting the boys and fixes everything, effectively deleting the alternate future where the boys are busted. But if you think about it, that did happen, all of it. Not in the regular timeline, sure, but in some unspecified place and time in the universe, not only the boys got busted, but also hundreds of thousands of people lived in Duke's dystopia, or billions if he managed to rule the world. So the fact that the timeline simply ceased to exist afterwards doesn't change the fact that actual people lived in that timeline, which is kinda dark if you ask me, but at least the boys got busted, and that counts as a victory. Later on, to celebrate a mission well done, future Candace vanishes into thin air being erased from existence. Again, pretty dark, yeah. Shouldn't the Candace from the bad future cease to exist too? Oh darn. Number 4. A Real Boy Candace, holy guacamole, no busting, leaping lizards back to normal. <laughs> Candace asks Stacy to hypnotize her so that she can spend some quality time with Jeremy without thinking of her brothers, which admittedly is a very smart and thoughtful idea of hers. She knows she can't control herself, so she looks for alternative ways to stop obsessing over her brothers. How nice! Anyhow, one thing led to another, and her trigger word is said out loud in the middle of her date, so Candace immediately runs back home to bust the boys. She calls her mom, and as Linda enters the backyard, she's shocked seeing a giant spring suction cup thing that you push down and you never know when it's gonna pop up in the air. Yeah, what are those things called, anyway? I don't know, but Ferb and I built a big one! At last, Phineas and Ferb got busted. Twice. Three times? Oh yeah. Linda gets hit by Doof's forget about it eater and forgets what she just saw multiple times. Then at one point she yells holy guacamole, making Candace leave the backyard and get back to her date with Jeremy. The mom is hit by the nader one last time, and without noticing the machine the boys built, she leaves the backyard. Do take into consideration, however, that the effect of most of Doof's nators is just temporary, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think Linda learned about her son's doings on this occasion, but ultimately kept her mouth shut. Or maybe I'm just doing a shameless plug to one of my videos and none of this is actually true, who knows? 
Number 3, Phineas and Ferb's Quantum Boogaloo again. Yeah, that's because the boys got busted twice in the same episode. Candice, you're so young! Mom, you're so old! Let's pick up where we left off. Right after the bad future is fixed, present Phineas, Ferb and Isabella take future Candace back to her time. Present Candace, however, decides to join him, and as they all arrive to the future, she rushes to find future Linda, intending to show herself as proof of the boy's time machine. And, at long last, as future Linda sees young Candace, she instantly realizes everything her daughter ever told her was true and apologizes to her for not believing her for the longest time. And honestly, that's far from being a decent apology, especially after 20 years of calling her own daughter crazy, but never mind. After learning the truth though, Linda doesn't ground the boys, since future Phineas and Ferb are grown-ups now, while she doesn't have jurisdiction over young Phineas and Ferb anymore. Okay, but officially, on record, they are busted, right? Sure, Candace. They are busted. Yes! This grants Candace the hollowest victory ever, but also gives her just the right amount of confidence to keep her busting attempts going for two whole decades, give or take. Because instead of growing disheartened, knowing how adult Candace never managed to bust her brothers after trying for 20 years straight, she interprets it all as proof of the boy's bustability or something, which encourages her to never stop trying. Honestly, she looks so hyped, I wouldn't have the heart to tell her that's not how it works. So I'm never gonna give up. Never, never, never! Did I say never? Yes, I did! Never, never, never! Number 2, Phineas and Ferb get busted. Oh, great a magical being who maketh all things magically vanish before mom sees them. Knock it off! The episode starts with Candace dragging Linda to the backyard, where the boys build the flying car of the future today and its control tower. Just as Linda's telling Candace how she's tired of her made-up stories, she notices the enormous monstrosity in her backyard and her children casually landing her flying station wagon on top of a precarious tower that's hundreds of feet tall. I'd say Linda's reaction is probably the best here. You can really enjoy the rage, the disappointment, and the surprise she's feeling, as she yells at the boys, ordering them to come down. Phineas then digs his own grave, admitting they've been doing things like this all summer, and Linda, overwhelmed with guilt, apologizes to Candace, this time the proper way. Imagine how she felt upon realizing how crappy of a parent she's been, never believing her daughter. However, it's a shame none of this ever actually happened, as at the very end of the episode it's revealed the whole thing was just part of Candace's dream, inside of Perry's dream, all wrapped up in a very lame conclusion. You sounded like you were having a bad dream. Nonetheless, I'm including this episode in the list because if I didn't, the comment section would blow up with people telling me how I forgot the bootcamp episode. Apparently, everyone seems to remember about the existence of this episode, but most people fail to remember it was all just a dream. And yes, the dream thing is just a giant middle finger to the audience and shouldn't count as Candace actually busting her brothers, but I needed 5 episodes for this video, or no, uh, uh, it's on the list because it's one of the most well-known episodes of the show and deserves a mention. Also, because I secretly wish the dream part never happened and all the events of the episode were actually canon, it would have been a perfect season finale, honestly. But now, let me jog your memory and show you the honorable mentions, that is, all the instances in which Candace got so super close to busting her brothers. Kinda. Ish. It depends. Uh, you'll see. Love at first bite, when the boys got busted because of dirty towels. Towels? Oh, sorry, mom. Towels? Interview with the platypus and Thaddeus and Thor, even though the mom didn't get mad at the boys and just thought the things they built were adorable. Back here at Hodgepodge, but Linda thought she was hallucinating there. And Penis and Furby interrupted, but that was just kind of a joke. Boys, you are so busted. Feel the burn. I've always liked pointing. So maybe she didn't get that close to busting them. Never mind, at number one we have She's the Mayor. In this day and age, it is all of our responsibility to bust the little brothers of corporate greed to the mom of fiscal responsibility. Candace became mayor of Danville for one day and gained pretty much unlimited power by unintentionally writing a metaphorical essay about busting her brothers. Now having the whole city on a string, Candace organizes the big bust. Which is not what you think, you nasty, it's an event attended by hundreds of people where everybody was ready to witness the fall of Phineas and Ferb. Candace has a limousine take Linda and Lawrence back home, where Candace, the press and the media are waiting to reveal the old-timey pioneer town the boys built. And Linda finally sees it. 
She yells at the boys and apologizes to Candace. So don't you see a pattern here? It's implied that conspiracy theories aside, but do go ahead and watch them. The mom doesn't give a damn about how awesome her son's doings are and she only cares about their safety and possibly them not breaking any laws. They can be wearing all the helmets in the world, but that doesn't stop a parent from worrying. Meanwhile, across town, an extremely bored Doofenshmirtz who's playing golf with his brother and his platypus caddy brought with him his accelerator to fast forward the tedious game. So just as Linda's grounding the boys, Doof's accelerator malfunctions and accidentally reverses the direction of time, resetting the day, almost tearing apart the very fabric of space-time. I mean, golf, jeesh, totally worth it. After undoing all of the day's events, back to the announcement at City Hall, the Nader alters the timeline once again, making the Crazy old Kurt, that's his name on the wiki, win the mayor for a day contest instead of Candace, bringing everything back to normal, ish, and depriving Candace of her only chance to bust her brothers. I was robbed. Let me know whether you guys would have liked Candace to actually bust your brothers once and for all, with no time altering mishaps, dream scenarios, or memories being erased, so that this whole plotline would finally come to an end, or if you liked seeing her screaming and scheming till the very last episode, or even if you believe she should never have tried busting her brothers to begin with, but that's the most boring option. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!